Let's talk to Ace in Indiana. Hey. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the show. What can we help you with tonight? So I'll try to give the abridged version of my story really fast. <laughs> um, so I grew up in Christianity, non-denominational, and my mom always pounded into us, basically like, in other words, like sex is bad. You can only have sex after marriage, blah, blah, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I realized that I was asexual um, when I was around 16 and then came out as an asexual lesbian, like homoromantic when I was like 18. And now I'm 20 and crazy enough, I'm in a relationship with a guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> to yeah, the best yeah. of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so now I just... Um, I find myself struggling a lot with the asexual portion of myself. Um, at nighttime, I struggle a lot um, with thinking about, you know, in the best way I can put it, you know, male genitalia and how to deal with that. And, you know, he's very, my boyfriend is very understanding and he's very patient with me, but it's just like this worry that I have that I'll never be able to like, you know, support him in that way, like enough, I guess, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> Can I ask how long you've been in that relationship? Um, we're going on about a year now, which is like the longest relationship that I've been in. Your experience is reminding me so much of my own relationship because I am also in a relationship with an asexual person. Um, and I typically think of myself as somebody who is probably more attracted to the feminine form and my partner is a cis male. So uh, uh, in, in some ways we are kind of in similar boats. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, we both worried about that kind of thing a lot really early in our relationship. Like, uh, in fact, I found after he came out to me as ace, he told me that like a lot of the sex that we were having was just because he thought that we kind of had to. Um, and I yeah. and I don't know if you're sex repulsed, like you don't do it at all, or if you're just kind of like, eh, about it. Um, I, I've tried with him one time, um, but that's like the only time I've had an encounter with someone. And it, it didn't go horribly. It's just, it was like pretty much what I expected, where it was like, <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm not getting anything out of this. Yeah, and <laughs> I and I'm saying that now, of course, for my own experience, but again, just for what my partner has told me is like it's not that uh, he's demisexual. I think is what he t or gray asexual. So it's not that he gets nothing out of it, but it's like most of the time, if he has any sexual urges, he'd probably rather masturbate. Like that's kind of what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah. It's like sex. Yeah, eh. sounds a lot like me. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, does your, is your partner worried about you not being able to take care of him sexually? If, I mean, take care it's of, not, that's not. It's, it's all a lot in my head. <laughs> yeah, that definitely totally reminds me of the beginning of our relationship. And I, I mean, all I can really say is you're probably going to have that discussion more than once. You're probably going to come to him saying... I feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm real kind of insecure about this. I worry about this. And he's going to reassure you again. It's really not that big of a deal. He's got two hands. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. uh, that's probably going to happen just for a while. Kind of it possibly indefinitely. Or maybe eventually you'll kind of just get over it. That's kind of what happened for us is that eventually it was just like, we've been doing, we've been having this back and forth long enough that it kind of just went away after a while. It was like, it's pretty obvious that even though we have very different sexual desires that we could both deal with our own stuff. And when we do have sex together, it's fine. But even though it doesn't happen very often and it's like, it's fine. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I can't offer too much more. I think, I think Rudy really, really nailed that. Um, especially coming from a position where they are in a, they, they have been in a similar situation. If on the other side of it, um, I would just probably I'm gonna cut, 
cut uh, Christy to the chase and say, communication's key. <laughs> you gotta communicate. You gotta make sure that you are telling your partner what you are feeling, what your concerns are. And don't let that fester, right? Don't let that turn into an anxiety that then turns into bitterness because I've let that happen to me on for different reasons where I was like, I'm not gonna bother, bother my partner with my concerns. I'm just gonna sit in them and stew and, and deal with them myself. And it, then it became a whole deal where I started feeling resentful for the fact that I had to feel this way and, and, and they didn't know about it. So the best thing to do is just make sure that if you're feeling insecure, ask them for affirmation. If you're, if you're feeling like you're, you're worried about whether or not they are getting what they need, ask them straight out and come, come to them and say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm just checking in. How are we doing? How are you? What do you need? Uh, you know, how can we maybe reach some kind of a compromise position where we both get what we want, but aren't pushed beyond what we're comfortable with. Um, so yeah, I'd say as long as you're communicating and you guys are dedicated to making this work, then you should be good. Yeah, I think that's a uh, really good advice and I really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, thank you for calling in. If you have the conversation and you're, you, you, you come to a new conclusion or you and your partner come to some kind of awesome, uh, you know, collaborative uh, approach to this subject, uh, definitely give us a, give us a call back. We'd love to hear more from you. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Ace. Have a good rest of your night.